My name is Michael Winters. I'm a psychologist and a logotherapist practicing in Houston, Texas, USA. In the United States, there is a crisis not only in meaning, but also in logotherapy. <clears throat> Yesterday, Dr. Evans outlined the meaning crisis uh, that, that many people in the United States are experiencing. But I also want to highlight that there is a crisis in logotherapy in the United States. For example, there are very, very few psychology training programs that offer any exposure to logotherapy. In my own training, undergraduate, master's degree, doctorate degree, never mentioned Viktor Frankl or logotherapy. So it's not a part of the training. A couple of schools have some training, but very few have any training. Uh, in addition, most psychotherapy training, and this is becoming even more common in the United States, is focused on learning a manual for treatment. And so it's becoming more and more segmented, more and more reductionistic. Uh, so as logotherapists, we always love a crisis, though, right? A crisis means there's an opportunity for us to make a change. And uh, even though there is a crisis in logotherapy in the United States, and it's been so wonderful to hear so many countries that have powerful programs uh, that are uh, looking at, at logotherapy, that are uh, aligned with, with particular uh, educational institutions, uh, that is not the case in the United States. So I just want to outline a few very basic ways that we might start looking at uh, new ways to broaden logotherapy, to uh, enhance it throughout the United States and perhaps in other parts of the world as well. Number one, I think that it's time that we rebrand logotherapy as meaning-centered psychotherapy and meaning-centered approaches to life. I was glad to hear yesterday uh, Dr. Ortiz in Colombia has a meaning-centered uh, institute. The problem with logotherapy is it's hard to understand if you don't already know what it means. Uh, in fact, I was talking with Alexander Vesely just the other day, his film about his grandfather. He said when you go and you try to get someone to sponsor that and you use the word logotherapy, people turn off. They don't know what you're talking about. So I think it's time to look at that and to really think about it. It doesn't mean that we're not using the same principles. It just means that we are labeling it in a way that more people can understand, more people can see it. And in fact, there is a good model for this. The idea of gestalt therapy is now labeled emotion-focused therapy. It, it's more descriptive. It's easier to understand. You don't have to have a background in training to understand what it means. So I think it's really time to look at that and to move forward uh, with, with that, whether it's meaning-based, whether it's meaning-centered, but really looking at meaning as a central aspect uh, and, and publicizing it that way. The second thing that I think needs to be done, perhaps in the United States and, and in other places, is to have more diversity of training. Uh, Right now, the United States and the Viktor Frankl Institute of Logotherapy, which is headquartered in Abilene, has a curriculum for training logotherapists. But the introductory course takes 15 hours. Uh, that's, that would require at least two days. And that is not the common training model for continuing education of psychotherapists. A one-day model is more typical. So we need to have a one-day curriculum that then could be uh, brought on the road, so to speak, to go to town to town so we have more people introduced, more existing psychotherapists introduced to meaning-centered therapy and to logotherapy. In a similar way, and I haven't really heard much about this in this conference, is uh, looking at lay education and providing some credential or some way of, of having a systematized way of training people in meaning-based approaches to life. These are people that don't necessarily have or need a, a therapeutic degree, but are just interested in enhancing their own lives. I've done some things like this. I've taught courses uh, to general people and, and found a good response, actually a better response than when I try to teach specialized programs in logotherapy to therapists. 
So how do we broaden that? How do we make a common curriculum, maybe even have a certificate program for lay people who are looking for ways to introduce this? Uh, and I've heard you know, people that are doing this in terms of businesses, in terms of education, uh, that aren't using it particularly as psychotherapy or beyond psychotherapy, but are looking at it in other ways. So this, I think, is another piece that needs to be done. And I have two more points I just want to make quickly. First of all, is that the distance education uh, has been a very powerful program um, because we have technologies like Skype um, and things like that. I've uh, supervised two diplomates in, in logotherapy. The first one, uh, Dr. Paul McClellan, was in Australia. I was in the United States. But through the technology, we were able to have ongoing conversations that allowed us to, to provide this, this support. Where he did not have that support in Australia, we were able to do that. The second one was in South Carolina, very far from me. So we, again, used telephone and Skype. But this is also an inefficient technology one-on-one. -on -one. I think we should be using Skype groups to organize training um, that could be supervision groups, that could be a virtual group. There are a lot of opportunities, and I just wanted to, to present some of those opportunities to hopefully get people thinking about how can we expand ways of training and how do we look at uh, the need to, to go beyond this. Uh, I have an announcement also that I want to make. Uh, this is uh, for Dr. Paul um, in Australia. He was not able to make it, but he does have a, a program, a new program that he is starting. And there's a way to go online and look at those programs. It's, it's a long address, so I won't uh, give it to you over the paper. But uh, I do have it. I have that information. He would really like you to look at that and is looking for others to collaborate with. Um, so please, please take that as an advantage. And recognize, uh, I, I don't know about the other parts of the world. I was very heartened, like I said, to hear the, the discipline and, and how it's growing in many parts of the world. But in the United States, and I, I expect other parts of the world, to see this crisis that logotherapy is experiencing, not with despair, but as an opportunity for us to grow. Perhaps it's in connection with positive psychology. Perhaps it's doing things in a new way, but recognizing the thirst for meaning is there. We have to find a better way to meet that thirst. Thank you. Next, we, we do have a change in the program. So uh, the next speaker uh, will be uh, Rachel Asvagba from Nigeria. Uh, and she actually has two presentations that she, one yesterday, was not able to do. So she is going to present two presentations. And uh, Harold Moray will go later in the, uh, in the program. So Rachel.